So players, we're here at Euros and we're with the top 16 finisher, Rasmus. And uh, what did you do? I went with birds. It's the cool old classic, everybody loves it. Best deck, best deck. All right. And uh, what, were your, what were your score on Swiss? I went the X2. Like, I think I went 4-2 and then just won everything since then onto the top 16. And you were the highest rated flu player of the weekend, right? As far as I know, yeah. All right, awesome. Let's see the let's see the magic. So first off, we have like the standard triple Rubina. Yeah, yeah, no need to explain. Triple Eaglen. Only one thing, one token. Okay. I really wanted to fit in like more non-engine as you needed to break the balls and getting started. And you don't want to start with too many. It's a bit off if you want to want two of them, but I think like this is the best ratio. Mm -hmm. Two Empen. Okay. I've seen two Empen going around. I see the idea behind it. I feel like the time when you need the third Empen is why you already nearly won the game. So when it's just you managing your resources well, you can do with only two. And then one Riser and one Missile Avian because they're good. You, they're good, you have to <laughs> have them. And like, I used to think that this was like always over Avian when you search, but in this tournament, just Avian just came up so clutch. For hand traps, we got two ash and two shift, uh, three shifters. Yes. Why only two ash? I wanted to make room for the third. I wasn't able to. I kind of regretted it as Labyrinth turned out to be a really hard matchup. Luckily, I only met a single one of them. The shifters I made, I really enjoyed. Even though I met, was it seven Castillas to the <laughs> tournament? Well, they're just dead. But in like into the Chaos Dragon deck, into Runic decks, they can just like win the game, especially when you're going first game, going blind. All right. But that's it for the monsters. Yes. You take the spells, we have like stand standard triple map, you want to see it. Mm -hmm. Even running tower forming, just for the consistency. And another card we'll see later. Three Advent Adventure, standard as well. One. Wins, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How was this, this card? Like, this is one of the insane cards in the deck. Yeah. The fact that you can just go double imp in round one, set up both the trap and this, and you just start tripping your opponent's board. Especially yeah. going into the second imp to just get like two or three tributes in your opponent's turn. Yeah, it's super, super busted. Also, the board, where I see some people running, uh, running two of them. So I'm citing it. Yeah, I, think, I tried that for this uh, this tournament, but I didn't do well. I, I think uh, the one situation where it's good is when you get evenly matched. In all the others, you usually just recycle it and just manage it cleverly. Mm. And I, instead of running uh, that for board breaker, I choose non engine to run three Dark Runner more in the main. How are they? Uh, really good. Like now that cash isn't so lucky you out of the game, this just breaks the entire cash board. It breaks the Sprite board, it breaks the dragon cast. Oh, the dragon cast to have a trap pop, but you can easily manage that in the deck. And this was like so good to see, even when not when going first. Had one game where I do three of them, not fun, but uh, <laughs> really well. Then we have like the standard three part of prosperity, three part of duality. No reason not to run these. Mm -hmm. It's free card value. I ran two books. Did really you, good with all the cash. Did you miss on. the third one? No, not at all. All right. Like this was a common uh, card of cut when siding, because it's good into cash, but the other matchups that are basically just a uh, beta negate in most cases. Yeah, yeah. I ran two trust. How are they? That's uh, also a card I've it's, seen some play and not some not play. I really enjoyed it. Fifth of of games, you just win by grabbing a feather storm. Yeah. So you put an ash, and you're just cool. Feather storm usually you can play through an ash, and that's just an instant game. In the other 50% of games, there is a dead draw in round one. Maybe you can grab a Dark Ruler with it later. And just into cash alone is insane. Mm. So I just think the upside of having it is just outweighs the, the downsides. Yeah, I understand. And then the traps, yeah, there's of course the Dreaming Town and then the Feather Storm. Yes. All I right. usually wouldn't run Storm in, in the main deck, except because of charge. Yeah, you have to play it with the thrust. There's no, it's too good not to. So yeah, that's pretty much the, the main deck. 40 cards, like anything more than 40s and Flanderies is so stupid. Yeah, you need to see your little birds. Exactly. If we go into the really exciting extra deck, 
Yes, yes. This had one role today for, in all my games, so it was to get benefit disparity. Cars have triple yeah, the Zeus line. Yes. If I hit some random Eric Nista player, we have lines to go into access code. If that came up, never came up. Like I never made any of these in the games. Mm -hmm. It's just nice having ha nice having the option. Yes, of course. And then we have uh, an ultimate Slayer lineup. Ah, so you uh, side the ultimate Slayer. Yeah, and I never drew it. But in the matchup, where Salen was like, if I drew it, it would have been really great. It's out the Dragon Ruler board really well. It's good into rank the soul even because you just dump this guy on the link, get a free draw. So you remove one of the monsters for, for free. Right. And yeah, and some pure sprite you can argue running it as well, but yeah, I never drew Ultimate Slayer in the tournament, so didn't get a test and much live testing with it. Alright. But it felt good having it available. Fair enough. And finally for the side deck. Let's do this real quick. Yeah. When you go first, these two, how to win if you draw it. Yeah, we have broken card. I decided to run two Solemns as well, only for when I'm starting. Okay, how are they throughout the tournament? That's also just not very standard, I want to say. Yeah, I only drew them two times, but every time I have them, they felt like insanely good. Because it just makes you so much more safe, especially with torrential uh, triple tactic talents going around. Mm. You often want to save your, what's its name, uh, Dreaming Town. Yeah. Because if you do that and then it just triple tactics or dark will you and it sucks. Having this one just allows you when they say battle phase, you just say cool. If they have it, you negate it. If they don't, who cares? And then it just protects your against a dark ruler and or anything else they can do. Yeah, yeah. Like you already got some value enough, and it's like they need one specific card to break your board, and this just stop it. Mm -hmm. We have the final last blossom. Okay. I just want to, want to fit into main. I'll probably try to fit it into main later, but uh, mainly just because Labyrinth is a thing and it's a really hard matchup for, for this deck. All right, and what would you cut to put in the Ash if you had to cut something right I'm now? I'm considering like cutting a Shifter, maybe moving it to the side, so only running two Shifter and three Ash okay. currently. But it's like the really hard, power, hard part about the Flunder deck is that you have so many tech cards you want to fit into it and so many options. But it's, and they're like good in specific matchups. Yeah. So fitting it all in is just, it's just hell. Another card for the Labyrinth matchup, uh, Dark mm -hmm. The idea is that you basically cheat it out on the Eglum. So you, do, you already have a burn on the board. So if we search with Eglum, grab this, and before they can respond with any of the furniture, you just drop this and they're locked out on, unless they draw. Imperm or like something like that. Yeah. Never drew it, only played one Labyrinth the entire tournament, and it didn't come up there because I, I, I got sacked at the, that enough. game. We have the two ultimate layers, okay. mainly for Synchro matchup, as I mentioned earlier. They just feel too good, actually, when really you draw into them. I didn't draw into this tournament, so they didn't really come up. But just having them plus the three Dark Ruler no more just gives you five cards that can blow out the heavy negate board you see nowadays. Mm. Finally, we have three Cosmic Cyclones. You have to run this. Some might run Twin Twisters just to remove the Flood Gauge when you go second and often snipe other good cards. Yeah. Like Anti Spell kills this deck, so. Ah, fair enough. And finally, the three Evilly Match. Like, this card is just insane. Yeah, it's, it's broken. It's second. I agree. Like, again, against Cash, you Evilly Match them and they're left with an advice out and you can easily play through that. Against the other decks, like, bait out in the gate, do this and they're cleared. Awesome. Alright, so is there anything you want to say at the end? Uh, I promised uh, one of my buddies, uh, Benson, to shout him up for, for um, yeah, getting me food yesterday. I would have been dead when playing day two today, as we finished so late that all the food places were closed. Mm -hmm. And beside that, like, to all the haters of front of East, this thing is amazing. You should yeah, try it it's, out. It's, it's broken. It's, it's so strong, it's so good, but it's also insanely fun to play. Mm. I agree, I agree. All right, Team Paradigm, signing up.